My name is Alex Chen and I'm a pulmonologist. The National Lung Cancer Screening Trial demonstrated a significant reduction in lung cancer-related mortality with low-dose CT screening of high-risk individuals. With this era of lung cancer screening, practicing physicians can expect to see an increasing number of pulmonary nodules, some of which will require biopsies for diagnostic purposes. CT-guided transthoracic needle aspiration is a commonly used technique for biopsying pulmonary nodules, though some patients may not be optimal candidates for the procedure due to location of the lesion or due to underlying lung diseases such as emphysema. Technical advancements have improved the diagnostic yield of peripheral bronchoscopy for pulmonary nodules and now offer a potential alternative to CT-guided needle aspiration. This video will focus on the evaluation of the patient with a pulmonary nodule, arriving at the decision to perform peripheral bronchoscopy, planning a peripheral bronchoscopy case using radial EBUS, setup of the components to perform the procedure, and the procedural aspects of performing peripheral bronchoscopy for pulmonary nodules using radial EBUS. This patient presents for further evaluation of a pulmonary nodule that was incidentally found on imaging that was obtained for unrelated reasons. The patient is a 50-year-old male with a significant smoking history, relatively preserved pulmonary function with an FEV1 of 70% and no other comorbidities. The CT scan shows a 3-centimeter nodule in the right upper lobe that has moderate uptake on PET imaging. It's worth noting at this point that not all pulmonary nodules require biopsies for diagnostic purposes. In the presence of a positive PET scan, a pulmonary nodule of this size in a smoker without evidence of metastatic disease in a patient who is medically able to tolerate surgery should be considered for surgical resection. Another patient presents with a 2 centimeter nodule on the left upper lobe that has grown from 1.5 centimeters on a chest CT scan performed approximately six months ago. The patient is a lifelong non-smoker, and PET scans show minimal uptake in the nodule without evidence of disease elsewhere. The patient was otherwise healthy and was seen in conjunction with a thoracic surgeon who requested a biopsy for tissue diagnosis prior to consideration of surgery. The location of a pulmonary nodule may influence the method of biopsy used to obtain a diagnosis. Lesions that approximate the chest wall may be more amenable to percutaneous needle aspiration, while the risk of pneumothorax with this technique increases for more centrally located lesions. Bronchoscopy may be considered for more centrally located lesions, though may also be used for lesions that are more peripheral depending on the comfort and experience level of the bronchoscopist. Patients who may not be optimal candidates for percutaneous biopsy due to underlying emphysema may also be suitable candidates for bronchoscopic approaches. A bronchus sign is an airway visible on chest CT that leads to the pulmonary nodule and may provide the bronchoscopist with additional information that assists with bronchoscopy planning. The absence of a bronchus sign does not indicate that an airway does not go directly to the peripheral lesion. It simply indicates that these smaller airways were not identified on chest CT. In this patient, the pulmonary nodule was felt to be accessible using bronchoscopy and the patient provided informed consent to proceed with the procedure. The patient was brought to the procedure suite and the patient's CT images were reviewed by the bronchoscopy team. Multiplanar reconstruction was used and axial, coronal, and sagittal views were evaluated to best determine nodule location. This nodule was isolated to a medial branch of the superior division of the lingula. Axial, coronal, and sagittal views were also used to plan a route to the target lesion in preparation for bronchoscopy. This type of pre-procedure planning should take less than five minutes but is critical to identifying the lesion during bronchoscopy. This procedure will be performed using moderate sedation with the laryngeal mask airway in place in line with the high flow oxygen system. Institutional practices will vary and peripheral cases may alternatively be performed in an operating room or an endoscopy suite with anesthesia support using an endotracheal tube or other type of airway during cases at the discretion of the bronchoscopist and or anesthesiologist. Peripheral bronchoscopy using radial EBUS may be performed in different ways depending on the individual case as well as with the comfort level and experience of the bronchoscopist. A guide sheath kit may be utilized to act as a conduit to access pulmonary nodules through which the radial ultrasound is passed into the lung periphery. 
Once the nodule is located using radial EBUS, the probe is withdrawn and the catheter is left in place. The metal band at the tip of the guide sheath renders the tip visible using fluoroscopy, and conventional biopsy forceps or brushes may be passed through the guide sheath to access the pulmonary nodule through the sheath. This technique provides a bronchoscopist with a conduit to the lung periphery, such that once the location of the nodule is confirmed using radial EBUS, repeated biopsies can be performed from the same location. In some cases, despite careful planning and isolation of the lung nodule using the reference CT scan, the peripheral lesion may not be identified with initial inspection using the radial ultrasound probe. The guide sheath is not a steerable device, and redirecting it may be facilitated by manipulation of the bronchoscope or by using a double-hinged curette. The curette may be flexed or extended and can be rotated 360 degrees when passed through the guide sheath. To reposition the guide sheath, the radial probe is withdrawn and the curette is inserted through the guide sheath under fluoroscopic guidance so that the tip is passed distal to the metal band of the guide sheath. Under fluoroscopic guidance, an assistant withdraws the curette and guide sheath proximally and the curette is flexed or extended and rotated to the desired position. The bronchoscopist must determine if he or she wishes to examine airways superior, inferior, anterior, or posteriorly. With the tip of the curette in the desired position, the assistant will advance the curette distally and will feel the tip of the curette catch on an airway if one is present. At this point, the curette is advanced carefully into the desired airway, and once positioned, the guide sheath is advanced into the desired airway over the directional curette. The curette is then withdrawn, and the radial probe may be advanced into the new airway through the guide sheath. Smaller caliber bronchoscopes, such as the 4.2 mm outer diameter BFP190, allow improved accessibility to the lung periphery, such that the bronchoscope may be advanced all the way to or in close proximity to pulmonary nodules. The bronchoscopist may choose to use the guide sheath kit in this scenario, or may forego the guide sheath if the bronchoscope closely approximates the pulmonary nodule. In this scenario, the bronchoscope may be used as the guide sheath, and forceps, brushes, or transbronchial needle aspiration without the guide sheath can be performed with the bronchoscope positioned immediately proximal to the peripheral lesion. If the lesion cannot be found initially using this technique, the smaller caliber bronchoscope may be used to direct the radial probe into alternate airways either endoscopically and or with fluoroscopic guidance. The benefit in this scenario is that the smaller caliber bronchoscope may be directed without requiring the directional curette for pulmonary nodules that are more medially located. It is important to point out that when performing peripheral bronchoscopy with radial EBUS that biopsies are not performed with continuous ultrasound guidance as they are with the curvilinear EBUS TBNA system. Whether the guide sheath system or smaller caliber bronchoscope is used, the radial probe must be withdrawn first before a biopsy is performed. The radial EBUS probe provides a circumferential radial ultrasound view around the probe. Solid lesions in the lung parenchyma, such as pulmonary nodules, will have a characteristic snowstorm appearance separated from adjacent lung parenchyma by a white border. Ground glass lesions are more difficult to identify as the air component does not translate well into ultrasound imaging. When the ultrasound probe is in contact with a pulmonary nodule, its position relative to the nodule may be classified as concentric or eccentric. A concentric position is described when the probe is completely surrounded by the lesion, whereas an eccentric position is described when the probe sits adjacent to the lesion. These relationships are important to recognize as several publications have shown that biopsies obtained with a concentric view have diagnostic yields of 80% or greater, whereas biopsies obtained with an eccentric view range from 30 to 40%. Given these findings, when an eccentric view is found initially, it is advisable to try to reposition the probe to obtain a concentric view. It is important to note that not all lesions have airways that provide concentric views, but efforts should be made to thoroughly probe the area until the bronchoscopist is comfortable with arriving at that conclusion. The patient in our second clinical scenario underwent bronchoscopy with radial EBUS for the left upper lobe nodule. Given the location of this lesion relatively close to the anterior chest wall, a 4 mm bronchoscope was used to identify a medial branch of the superior division of the lingula 
and the radial probe was passed into the periphery using fluoroscopic guidance. Here you see the 4mm bronchoscope in the distal left main stem bronchus with the tip of the radial probe exposed. The 4mm bronchoscope is then advanced into the superior division of the lingula where a medial and lateral branch are identified. The probe is advanced into the medial subsegment showing a concentric view of the target lesion. Fluoroscopy provides an external view of the pathway taken to identify the lesion, which is in agreement with the planning performed prior to bronchoscopy using multiplanar reconstruction. Once the lesion is identified, the radial probe is advanced until the lesion is no longer visualized. This identifies a distal border of the lesion which can be visually marked with fluoroscopy. The probe is then withdrawn back to the bronchoscope until the lesion is no longer visible once again, thereby identifying the proximal border of the lesion. Because the 4mm bronchoscope was able to be positioned immediately proximal to the lesion, no guide sheath was used in this case. A 21 gauge aspiration needle was passed through the working channel of the bronchoscope into the periphery and was used to perform transbronchial needle aspiration of the lesion. On-site cytology provided a diagnosis of adenocarcinoma, which was confirmed on the final cytology report.